Hey you guys and welcome to our Rui Raptor YouTube channel. I'm Sandra and in this video we are going to show you the new printer from Race3D, the E2. This printer is announced to be released at the end of November, but we will check it out today. Until now, all the printers from Race3D have been Core XY systems. This new E2 model is not. It's an IDEX machine, or in other words, an independent dual extruder machine that can also print in copy or mirror mode. So let's unbox the printer and check the main specs with Rui. Hey you guys! Inside the box, the first thing we have is a warning sheet that we will have to check right after removing the printer from the package. And we also have a quick user guide. Next, we have five small boxes. These boxes contain different power cords for different outlets. We will only use the one that matches our outlet. And in the top foam, we have a set of four Allen keys. And this is the printer. The printer is almost 80 pounds, so we need to pick it up to remove the bottom foam. Inside the printer, we have more foam and boxes, but before we can take those out, we need to follow the warning sheet and power on the printer. There are four access locks used for shipping that need to be removed first, and they can be reached from the top lid. Two of them lock the X axis and the other two lock the Z axis. Now we can power on the printer. So from the five power cord boxes, for us we need to find the European cord. Connect the power cord at the back side of the printer. Peel off the screen protection. This screen is a 7 inch color touch screen and then turn on the printer. The printer will then turn on and the Raze 3D logo will appear on the screen. It takes a few seconds for the printer to boot up completely. And since it's the first power on, the printer will execute the initial setting setup sequence. It will start with the language choice. Then it instructs us to remove the access logs with a video on the screen. This step we have already done, so next. As soon as we confirm that all the locks are removed from the printer, the Z raises all the way up and hits the top mechanical end, which makes a grinding sound. This is a bit scary at first, but the message on the screen calms us down, because it's the normal procedure. Now, with the axis homed, we can now remove the foam and the box that is inside the printer. Once again, a video on the screen explains us how. We need to remove the top foam first, pull the bottom foam a little bit and then lift and then pull it out. Inside this big box we have a small bag containing a 16 GB flash drive, a couple of pneumatic fittings and a couple of fuses. We also have a spatula, tweezers, 
some stickers and a filler blade the size of a business card, some heat resistant gloves, a couple of spare PTFE tubes, spool holders, we have four pieces, a metal rod, and a couple of PLA filament spools. Back to the printer, we can now enter a name for the machine. And then we can choose if we want to connect the printer online. We can connect by cable and the connector is located at the back side of the printer or by Wi-Fi. If we select Wi-Fi, it will list all the available Wi-Fi networks for us to select one. Next, we can set up a few simple operations. The first one is how the printer will behave when we open the front door or upper door. Next, we can define what the front button will do once pressed. In our case, we don't want the button to turn off the screen, so we will disable that. And finally, we have the information about the raised cloud. So, the initial setup is complete. The system now wants to start a demo print, but we will cancel that for now. If you want to go ahead with the demo print, you need to install the filament spool holders first. On both sides of the printer, we have a small door. This is where we place the filament spools and feed the filament from, one for each extruder. So, grab the spool rollers and install them inside. The small rubber pieces will cover the openings. The user interface looks very user-friendly and filled with options. It will also display on the screen the model that we choose to print. In the Tune tab, we can control the nozzles and heat bed temperatures, the flow rate, fan speed and feed rate. In Utilities, we can home the axis, move each axis, disengage the motors, etc. And in the Print tab, we can load the models to print and also access some printing details. At the top, we have a quick settings button and the system settings menus. In the machine tab, we have lots and lots of information and settings we can use. Some of the settings we can edit are, for example, turn on and off the filament sensor, lower the Z to a defined Z position once the print is completed, enable or disable the mesh bed compensation, etc. The camera tab is related with the printer's internal camera. The Ethernet tab is for the IP address configuration. Next, we have the Wi-Fi network settings, and in others, we have screen brightness, date and time, language, and number of nozzles configuration. At the top of the printer, we have two USB connectors that we can use to load the files to print and to update the printer's firmware. To update the firmware is very easy. We go to Settings and then Update. We can update the firmware from Wi-Fi or from USB. And we can update the touch and the board. The front of the printer has a very cool carbon fiber look and the printer's dimensions are 607 mm by 596 mm by 465 mm. Both front door and upper door have interlocks. The main board is a raised 3D board based on the Duet board, which means it's equipped with TMC's 2660 on all axes and running on a RepRap based firmware. The printer also includes the print resume feature. As we mentioned earlier, the button can turn on and off the lights inside. These will help to light up the model. 
There is also a small camera inside. The print volume is 330 by 240 by 240 when printing with a single print head and 290 by 240 by 240 when printing with both print heads. The print surface is a magnetic steel plate with built tack. The magnets are big and they seem to be strong. Being an IDEX machine, it has a couple of independent print heads working in direct drive setup and can print in single mode, dual mode with different filament types and copy or mirror mode. The filament runout sensors are located in the print heads. In the specs, we can read that the nozzle can reach 300 degrees C and it support filament types such as PLA, ABS, PC, TPU, PVA, ASA, PETG, nylon, carbon or glass fiber enforced filament, etc. The master print head is equipped with a probe-based auto-leveling sensor. The X gantry is leveled automatically by moving the Z all the way up. The end stops are all mini optic sensors. The X axis moves on linear guides and the Y and Z axis move on linear rods. All the cables are arranged and running on cable tracks. And at the back side of the printer, we can see the HEPA filter. Now we will run several tests and prints, and soon we will make a second video with the results and the initial review, so stay tuned. If you are not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell to activate the notifications every time we publish a new video. If you like our work and wish to help, you can with our affiliate links with Patreon or PayPal. Keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye!